Hey everybody, welcome back. Alex here with another test. Today I'm testing rust for all those folks that have been asking about it. And we're doing two tests today. I'm gonna do a benchmark, a synthetic benchmark for rust. And then I'm gonna build Dino, which as some of you might know, is uh, the node wannabe project or uh, <laughs> a project that's there to make node better or a better version of node, supposedly. I don't know. I'm not here to judge. Dino is built with rust, so it's really performant and it's really nice. And it was created by one of the original founders of node i guess i don't know the history behind it i'm not here to do that i'm here to do some benchmarks and testing so we're going to build a synthetic benchmark and then a real world project now here's the synthetic benchmark that i'm talking about this is from benchmarks game and uh i, I sometimes do tests from this website because they have all these different stacks and languages including rust which i haven't done before that's right first time on this channel i'm testing rust I'm not a rust developer but i've set all this up so we're gonna do it and i've got four Four machines, got the MacBook Pro Intel variety. I have no idea whether we have optimizations enabled in Rust for Intel or not. We're gonna find this out. So in my C++ test, the Intel machine actually beat out the Apple Silicon machines, and that's these three. We've got the MacBook Air M1, MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip, and MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip, the notch varieties. I'll put the exact specs of these machines in the description down below, right under the subscribe button. All right, let me show you the code real quick here. By the way, Benchmark's game has a lot of different algorithms you can run. I tend to run the Mandelbrot test because it loads up the CPU and it uses up all the available CPUs. So it makes the fans go really hard. By the end of this video, you might hear the Intel machine in the microphone and it's gonna be loud in here and hot. So there's the code for it. Basically, all you do is copy and paste the code from here, and then you execute whatever they tell you down here. And that's gonna build the project. If you don't know this, Rust is a compiled language, so we need to first compile it. And that's what that does. And then I'm gonna run it, but I'm gonna make a slight change here. I'm gonna use Cargo to do the build and initialize a project with Cargo so I can put my dependencies in there because this code actually uses a few dependencies. They're up here and I don't have these installed locally. So I'm gonna use a Cargo Toml file. Basically it's like a YAML file that defines dependencies. And I'm gonna put those dependencies in here. And I'm gonna put that code in my main.rs file. Basically just a copy and paste of it. That's pretty much it. Now for the next test for Dino, I'm going to go to their manual and under the contributing section there's a build from source tab there and i'm gonna follow the steps as they are here that way you can reproduce the test at home on your own machines so that's why i like to stick as close as possible to the benchmarks okay let's go to the command line first i'm gonna do cargo clean just to make sure nothing is built yet for it and everything is cleaned up then i'm gonna do cargo build and I'm gonna use dash VV. Those are some flags you can include to optimize the code. And I'm gonna time this. Now, this build process will spit out the time, but I'm gonna use my own time as well, just to, uh, to see if there's any differences between them. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna do the same thing on all these machines, and I'm gonna kick things off right now. I wanna get the build time, and I wanna get the runtime. So let's first do the build time. All right, let's go ahead and build these. There we go. And that did not take long at all. 0.2 seconds on the Intel machine, 0 0.09 seconds on the M1. Okay, we'll come back to this one because I never ran this uh, before on the M1 Pro machine, so it has to download a few things first. I'll redo this one. And 0 0.07 on the M1 Max. This one's building, it is gonna take a little bit longer, 27 seconds in case you're curious with the initial download of the dependencies. So I'm gonna do here, this is a good example actually of doing cargo clean. I'm gonna do cargo clean here and I'm gonna do the build now again. And this one took 0.07 seconds, pretty much the same time that the M1 Max took. Okay, now we're gonna run this. To run it, I'm gonna issue the command cargo run and the instructions say to give it the parameter 16,000, which is what I usually do. But uh, I ran this before on on the M1 Max and that took 16 minutes to run. And um, I think we can get away with a shorter example here. So instead of 16,000, I'm gonna give it uh, 2,000 as the parameter here. And I'm gonna time this. I'll do the same thing on all these machines. All right, we're all set up, let's go. Now this is the test that's gonna kick things up a little bit. So right now on the Intel machine, that's the only one that has the fans on. Everyone else has their fans off. And that was a nice quick short test. I am gonna increase it a little bit just so that we can look at the activity monitor as well while it's running. But to give you preliminary numbers here, 
The Intel machine ran this in 9.8 seconds, M1 14 seconds, M1 Pro 8.9 seconds, and M1 Max 8.89 seconds. I'm not calling these numbers out exactly, but you get the idea, the general idea here. Now I want to tweak this a little bit. First of all, I don't want it printing anything to the console. That's the way the benchmark was designed, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to pipe this out to out.txt and I'm going to increase that time now to let's go with 6,000. That should take a little bit longer. The reason I don't want it printing out to the console is because it's noisy, it beeps. That's not the real reason. The real reason is that it's it's a side effect and I don't want that to be included in the time because different consoles will print out at different rates. Anyway, I know it's not exactly the way the test was designed and I've kind of deviated from that lately because it's a really good test for testing out the processor speed, but that console side effect is something I don't like personally. And also the 16 minute part. I don't like that because I got to go. Let's do it. One, two, three, and four. I'm trying to be patient. I know it's a must, but I'm waiting, waiting, waiting for rust. I'm trying to be patient. I know it's a must, but I'm waiting, waiting, waiting for rust. Now let's take a look at the activity monitor here. And this is the M1 Pro. So on the CPU, you can see Mandelbrot is actually using up all the CPUs now. Now the fans are still off on the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. We're at 76 degrees and 79 degrees over there. The Intel machine is at 99 degrees and the fans are kicking up to 3100 RPM now. Now the M1, this is the one that doesn't have any fans. So the temperature is at 93 degrees at this point and it might suffer a little bit because if it reaches close to 100 degrees, things might slow down a little bit because of throttling. All right, so you can see that uh, there's Mandelbrot. CPU is uh, using up all the cores, all 10 cores. And there's the history for it. It's really using it up. Now let's take a look at M1 Max. There's the activity monitor for that. Same thing here. So I'm expecting that the M1 Pro and the M1 Max will come in at about the same time because, well, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty close. The test finished on these two machines already because they both have 10 cores. So... They're just using those cores. This is not a memory heavy test, so it's not gonna use the memory and they're pretty much gonna be the same. Now the Intel machine really kicking up a storm here and it is finished. I didn't catch it in time, but all the cores were being used. I can show you that on a Dino test when we do that. So you can see that we're still waiting for the M1 MacBook Air. Now the MacBook Air has been an impressive machine, but lately I've been giving it some really heavy duty tasks. And for things like this, it's, uh, it's throttling, it's reaching that 100 degree area. It's taking a little bit longer to finish tests like this. And yes, for those of you that are interested, I did restart the machine before doing the test. So there's nothing in the background. None of these machines have things running in the background. The M1 Max actually has screen sharing on. I'm gonna actually turn that off. But as you can see, that was not affecting the test at all because we got one minute, 17 seconds, 0 0.48, 0 0.48 as the result there. And one 17 seconds, 0.44 on the M1 Pro. <laughs> so uh, four hundredths of a second faster on the M1 Pro. Of course, I'm gonna run this a couple of times just to get an average. Now the Intel machine, the Core i9 got 1 minute 43 seconds, so quite a bit slower on this test. And the slowest one was the M1 with 2 minutes and 13 seconds. I'm going to run this just one more time so we can get somewhat of an average there. And now let's take a look at the cores on the M1 and the Intel machine. Now here's another thing about the M1. It only has 8 cores compared to the 10 cores of the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. So clearly, because this is a multi-core test, it's not going to win by default is just not gonna because it has less cores. The cores are pretty much the same as on these beefy machines, but there's just less of them. So there's less availability to do the work. This machine lost before it even started, but it's not doing too bad considering the price difference between all these machines. The MacBook Air M1 is a lot, a lot cheaper. In some cases, it's four times cheaper than this Intel machine, for example, which is now a very loud and very hot running machine. So let's take a look at that. And you can see an activity monitor Mandelbrot is running all the cores all 16 of them there's actually eight cores in the machine but they're hyper threaded so it looks as if there's 16 virtual cores and we have some variation now the m1 pro and the m1 max just finished the m1 pro actually is the winner in this case at one minute and 16 seconds the m1 max at one minute and 20 seconds so a little bit slower with the m1 max but 
insignificant. Intel machine finished at 1 minute 38 seconds, a few seconds faster than the first iteration, and we're still waiting for the M1. There we go, 2 minutes and 17 seconds, a few seconds slower than the first time, probably because it's still warm from the first run. So yeah, it's going to throttle a little bit for that second run. And I've seen this happen time and time again. The more I run on it, the more builds, the slower they get with time if I don't let the machine cool down. Now it cools down pretty quickly. You can see that the temperature is going down. It was near 100 and now it's at 61, which is pretty good. And 54 on the M1 Pro, 53 on the M1 Max and 58 on the Intel machine. So. There you go, folks, for the Mandelbrot synthetic test. Let's move on to the Dino test. I'm going to build Dino from scratch using the instructions that they provide. And the command is exactly the same. Because they use cargo to do the build, I'm going to do the same thing here. So cargo build dash VV, and I'm going to time this build as well. So actually, before I do that, I'm going to clean it just to make sure everything is nice and clean. Cargo clean on all these machines. All right, I waited a little bit longer. Now the machines are very calm. Well, the Intel machine is still spinning at 3800 RPM, but the temperature is down. Now what's nice about TG Pro, that's the program I'm using to get a readout for the temperature and control the fans, is I can turn the fan on to max and it's gonna blast that fan and it's gonna help cool down the system faster. So theoretically, if I turn on that fan while it's building, if the build is causing the machine to be really hot, I could potentially speed up the build by turning up the fans, maybe. That's not the test we're doing today anyway. All right, so to set this up, I'm gonna do time cargo build dash VV. And all we're doing today is just a build test. We're not running anything. We're not running Dino, just building it to see how long that takes. All right, that's enough. Let's turn the fan down to system. There we go. <laughs> so much quieter now. All right, folks, the temperature now is down to 55 on the Intel machine, which is around where we started 45 on the M1 48 on the M1 Pro and 48 on the M1 Max. So we're nice and cool again. Well, outside at least. Inside, it's still pretty darn warm. So you wouldn't want to be inside these machines right now. Let's do this one, two, three, and four. And they're off to the races. Let's see which one of these will finish first. Intel machine is up to 90 degrees. M1 is up to 77, 73 over here on the Pro and 80 on the M1 Max. Let's take a little peek at the activity monitor here to see what's going on. And this test is not designed to peg that CPU. So it doesn't look like it's really doing that much over there. There's cargo, Psh, barely doing anything. 4% in the CPU. So it's doing a build, but I think a lot of this build has to do with copying files back and forth, copying lots of small little files. So who's got the advantage here? Yes, this is somewhat of a CPU test, but it's going to be probably mostly an SSD test. And these new M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBook Pros have an insanely fast SSD, way faster than those other SSDs. So let's see. Oh, before I even had a chance to finish that sentence, we already have these two machines that finish the test and we're still waiting for the Intel machine which is now kicking up into loud gear and the M1 but it shouldn't be long all right who is it gonna be the Intel machine or the M1 MacBook Air oh the MacBook Air finished before the Intel machine finished MacBook Air redeems itself again not as fast as the M1 Pro or the M1 Max but still much faster than the Intel machine here are the final times ready for this the winner is M1 Max at 1 minute and 18 seconds and still pretty close to the M1 Pro, 1 minute 25 seconds, M1 at 2 minutes and 4 seconds, and the Intel Core i9 at 2 minutes and 43 seconds. There you go, folks. Appreciate a thumbs up if this was entertaining or educational, or if you got some valuable information here. And consider subscribing. That red button should be turned gray if you tap on it. Just try it. It turns gray when you tap on it. It's a really cool little effect that YouTube has. <laughs> I'll see you all later, folks. Thanks a lot.